Hello, good people of Fully Charged, and welcome to the big, fat, fully charged buying guide 2022. So called because it's 2022, and off the back of Christmas, I feel quite fat. Now, if you're watching this, there's a fair chance that you are seriously considering making the switch to electric this year, and I'm here to tell you, do it. With charging infrastructure around the world improving at a rapid rate and a bigger and better selection of electric cars to choose from than ever before, there has never been a better time to make that switch. The thing is, with a huge array of EVs out there now, how on earth do you know where to begin? Which ones should be on your shortlist? Which ones aren't worth bothering with? Simple, you ask your boy. In this video, I will be sharing with you my 30 favorite electric cars that are on sale right now. We're not talking about cars that are coming out two years from now, five years from now, that Elon Musk promised on Twitter while drunk on Tezquila. We're talking about cars that you can go out with money and buy right now or at least in the next couple of months. And I've categorized these cars in the simplest way possible. By price, we're gonna do sub 15,000 pound EVs, which won't take long. Then we're going to do 15 to 30,000, 30 to 45, and then blow the bank. And as a little bonus, I'm also going to talk about some of my favorite second-hand electric car bargains out there right now. I've not bothered separating these cars by segment because honestly, the lines between car segments are so blurry these days. I mean, when does a hatchback become an urban crossover mini SUV? How long is a piece of string? The answer to both is, I don't care. Couple of quick caveats. First of all, please do keep in mind that the prices you're gonna see on screen are representative of the starting prices for these models. They only go up from there if you want the posh sound system or the self-driving or the massage seats. Also worth keeping in mind that not all of these models are going to be available everywhere in the world. I'm gonna be primarily focusing on the European market, but I think a lot of these cars that I'm talking about are also available in North America. So with no further ado, let's get into the first category, which is sub 15,000 pounds. Now these days, especially where I live in London, you can barely get a sandwich for less than 15,000 pounds. And unfortunately the same is true of EVs. Truthfully, even under 25 grand, there is still so little occupying that space. But if you're looking for something super simple, not much range, just for little city trips and school runs and food shops, perhaps you might consider the Citroen Ami. Following the footsteps of the Twizy, the Ami is a super compact two-seater urban runabout, although it has two things that the Twizy doesn't have. Doors. Ooh, fancy. I adore this car. I just love how despite its simplicity and use of cheap materials, it manages to burst with charm. Range is less than 50 miles, top speed is less than 30 miles per hour, but do you need more than that in a city? Alternatively, if you're looking for something that offers a little more fun and a little less wheels, perhaps you might consider genuinely one of the best things that I drove last year, the Carver. Like the Ami, the Carver is a two-seater, maybe one and a half. But unlike the Ami, the configuration is a one plus one with a passenger behind the driver. This allows the Carver to be really narrow, enabling it to squeeze through gaps in traffic, usually reserved for motorbikes and bicycles. Oh, and it also leans into corners when you steer the wheel like a motorcycle. I didn't know that driving around a city at 20, 25 miles an hour could be as fun as it is in the Carver. Yes, it's bizarre. Yes, people will stare, but you'll be too busy giggling like a lunatic to care. Finally, we have the king of the cheap electric car, the wonderful Dacia Spring. This car is currently available across most of continental Europe and hopefully will be coming to the UK quite soon as well. Currently in France, with generous government incentives, you can have one of these for the equivalent of 10 and a half thousand pounds. And this is no micro car. It's a proper little compact four seater with a steering wheel and doors and not much else. It's really simple, but it's wonderfully simple, delightfully cheap and the exact type of car that we are sorely missing so much in the EV space. And there we have it. Those are our sub 15K options. Not very many. Hopefully this time next year, we'll have plenty more to talk about. 
But do keep in mind that the vast majority of the cars that we're talking about here, we have covered in full review videos on the channel. So if anything on this list piques your interest, search it up on the channel, watch the full review, get more info, Bobby lose your uncle. See? <laughs> Lots of good stuff to talk about here with a couple of clear standouts, in my opinion. But first, let's talk about a trio of charming urban city runabouts, the Fiat 500, the Honda E, and the Mini Electric. Now, due to their relatively high price tags and low ranges, I think that these three have primarily found themselves being bought as second cars for affluent city-dwelling families. But that's fine. If it means that Penelope is picking up Hugo and Lettuce from judo practice in a Honda E instead of a Volvo XC90, I call that progress. And they really are just delightful little cars, all three of them. The Honda E for me is one of the finest pieces of automotive design in the last 10 years, both inside and out. Also has a usefully tiny turning circle, making it really easy to maneuver in city streets. The Mini is legitimately one of the best handling electric cars that you can buy right now, offering genuine hot hatch thrills. And the 500 offers all the retro charm and style of its petrol powered predecessor, and is also available in a useful different number of configurations. The smaller battery version of the 500, which is good for some 100 miles, starts at 23,000 pounds, massively undercutting the other two. But if you want it with a bigger battery, good for more like 200 miles, you can have that for a little more money. You can even have it as a convertible. And I think that makes it the only convertible EV on sale right now, at least until the Hummer EV arrives. And rest assured, we will be bringing you that very important twin test as soon as possible. Alternatively, if you're not too fussed about winning style points and you just want a small EV that isn't limited to the city by its range, surely the car for you is the loyal Renault Zoe. Despite being almost a decade old now, it's still one of the best bang for buck EVs out there and its 52 kilowatt hour battery pack remains unbeaten at this segment of car. But what if you want it all? What if you want a car that offers some of the charm and style offered by the Fiat 500, the Honda E and the Mini Electric with some of the practicality of the more rangy Renault Zoe? Well, as a middle ground, might I suggest the Peugeot E208. With looks to kill, a funky interior and a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack offering range probably in the low 200s, it really is a nice compromise and it might just be the most well-rounded car in this segment. Anyway, enough city stuff. Let's talk about some slightly larger cars. Let's talk about family cars. These next two offer a little bit more cabin space and more than enough range to be your one and only car. First of all, we've got the trusty Hyundai Kona. This is a fully charged favorite. It has loyally served as our camera car for the last couple of years. This car just gets the job done. Lots of equipment as standard, lots more equipment available as options, including a heads up display. And expect with the bigger battery, this is a genuine 300 mile family car and there still aren't very many of those around. It's been knocking about for a good while now, but thanks to a recent facelift, it still feels fresh. You might not fall madly in love with it. It's not the most exciting car on the road. It's also a little bit stingy on rear legroom, but that aside, it's just a wonderfully easy to live with electric car. And then we come to what is shaping up to be one of the surprise packages of 2022, the Aura Cat. Now I'm being a bit cheeky adding this one to the list because it's not quite out yet. And when it does come out, it's gonna be in the UK only to begin with. But frankly, I just had to give it a mention because I was so impressed when I saw this thing in the metal last year. The Cat will be the first Chinese badged EV to go on sale in the UK when it releases and to counteract any stigma around Chinese build quality, Aura have gone big on quality. The Cat is beautifully built, features premium materials in the cabin as standard and huge amounts of cabin space. This looks like being a genuine ID3 rival and hopefully I'll be giving you a full review of it on the channel very soon. And now we arrive at what are for me the two superstars of the sub £30,000 EV bracket and those are the MG ZS and the MG5. For me, these are two of the best value for money cars on sale in the world right now. MG are on fire. And these two cars, they just make the competition look a bit silly and overpriced. 
The ZS is an electric SUV, which thanks to a recent update now has range in the high 200s, standard equipment aplenty, and a smart new face. And yet, you can have it for less than £30,000, several thousand pounds cheaper than any other electric SUV. As for the five, well, first of all, immediate cool points for being the only electric estate car in the world, aside from the Taycan Cross Turismo, which slightly different price brackets. And surely no other electric car offers so much space for your cash. Now, I grant you, these are not the most exciting cars that you're ever going to experience. And truth be told, when you prod around them, you will find a few corners cut. The interiors are not exactly Rolls-Royce-esque. But I don't care. We've got plenty of posh premium electric cars to choose from. These are the ones that we don't have enough of. This is the simple utilitarian electric transport that we've been crying out for. And these two are decisively two of the best available right now. That brings us to the 30 to 45,000 pound bracket. You still with me? Let's just come on, shake it out, shake it out. This is an exciting bracket because in this price range is where you find what are, in my opinion, the four best electric cars in the world right now. Now, first of all, let's head back to the family car segment. We've had the Aura Cat and the Kona. I now give you the VW ID3 and the Cupra Born. Fundamentally, these are the same car underneath, and which one you prefer largely depends on your answer to one question. You like bronze bits? Personally, I think the Cupra is a more desirable package inside and out, but either way, you are getting a really, really spacious family car, thanks to that bespoke EV architecture, with great handling, fast charging, and lots of different configurations available. You can have your ID3 with anywhere from 170 to 280 miles of range, depending on which one you go for. And there are some really fancy features up the top end of that scale, including an augmented reality heads-up display, which is really cool. That being said, the Bourne and the ID3 I recommend are the simpler, cheaper entry-level ones. The top-end ones are getting on for 40 grand, and at that price, they're stepping on the toes of some really nice EVs, which we're going to get to in a second. But let's stay with VW Group for now. And for those in need of even more cabin and boot space, let's have a quick chat about the VW ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq. Again, these cars are fundamentally the same underneath. They both use the MEB platform built by VW, which means they both have bespoke EV architecture, which means they both offer huge amounts of space. I do have to point out that the infotainment systems on these early VW Group electric cars are something of a weak point. They're a bit fiddly, slightly annoying to use. I hope and I pray that that's gonna continue to improve over time with over-the-air updates because the rest of the car is solid. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention the Kia e-Niro at this point, another firm favorite here at Fully Charged. This is one of those cars that owners just sing about. It doesn't have bespoke EV architecture, which means you don't get the same cavernous interior of those VW Group cars. But what you do get in exchange is a much more user-friendly cabin and infotainment system. Also, like the Kona, spec with the bigger battery, this is a range monster, a, a nigh on 300 mile family car. The only thing I would say about the e-Nero is maybe wait a while because they've just shown us first pictures of the new generation one and whew, it looks like an improvement in every measurable way. Now, representing the Stellantis group at this price point, we've got plenty of cars to choose from. We've got the Vauxhall Mokka E, the Peugeot E2008, the DSE thingy-majig. But I'm going with the Citroen EC4, purely because I think it's the most unique of the bunch. You get two things with the EC4, quirky, funky French styling and comfort. I really admire a modern car that is not in any way interested in sportiness or dynamism. It just wants to be le squashy. And as a result, the EC4 is legitimately one of the most comfortable electric cars that you can buy right now. It's just a bit of a shame that it doesn't have the long range to match its long distance driving capabilities. Now, let's talk sporty stuff. Now, in these early days of electric cars, which make no mistake, we are still in, it's not especially easy to make electric cars feel sporty. That's because A, they don't have engines, and typically the engine is where sports cars get lots of their personality from, and B, batteries are heavy, and heavy is not especially conducive to sporty. But despite that, these three hefty EVs managed to be properly good to drive. First of all, we have the Polestar 2, 
Is it a hatchback? Is it a jacked up family saloon? Is it a crossover? Don't know, don't care, it's brilliant. It comes with a gorgeous, beautifully made, delightfully Swedish interior, one of the best infotainment systems ever fitted to any car, and it is properly capable down a twisty B-road, both in single motor and dual motor configurations. A word of warning, stay well clear of the performance pack for this car. Those adjustable Olin's dampers, they just make the whole car unnecessarily firm. And let's be real, the chances of you getting under that car with some spanners and adjusting those dampers ever is zero. Then we have the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now make no mistake, the branding, the badge, the design, it's pure marketing fluff. That car has as much in common with an old Mustang as it does with this water bottle. But despite being a properly big family SUV, this thing is really good to drive. The steering is crisp. It controls its weight beautifully. It's really punchy with the dual motor setup. And I think Ford has my favorite electric car sound of anyone so far. I was a bit late to the party with the Mackie. I actually only drove it for the first time late last summer and I was really, really impressed by its dynamic capability. And rounding off this trio of sporty EVs is the Kia EV6. This car's design is Marmite. You're either gonna hate it or wanna spread it on your toast, but the rest of the car is brilliant. And what I remember most about the EV6 is just how different it felt in sport versus comfort mode. This can genuinely be a fun driver-focused car or a gentle, quiet family hauler, depending on what sort of mood you're in. But the best thing about the EV6 is that despite Kia's big fancy reinvention of itself, it's still a Kia at its core. It's still sensible, it's still thoughtfully designed with little touches to make your life just a bit easier, like hooks for your shopping bag. It is a brilliant, brilliant electric car, one of my absolute favorites from last year. And finally, to close out this 30 to 45,000 section, we have what are, in my opinion, the two best electric cars on sale right now. The Tesla Model 3 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now, as some of you may know, I have some gripes with Tesla. I don't much like the way they look. I think the build quality continues to be completely unacceptable. And yet, in spite of all of that, the Model 3 is still probably the best electric car in the world because it's that good. On dual carriageways and motorways, the self-driving tech is just frighteningly effective. I mean, nothing else comes close. The user interface is the best on any car ever made. The range is still pretty much unbeaten in the long range version of the car. And that's before we even get into the Tesla supercharger network, which single-handedly removes the most annoying part of EV ownership, inconsistent chargers. Yes, they're flawed in some ways, but the truth is when you drive a Tesla, you just feel like you're sitting in the future. And there is a reason why half of all EVs that you see on the road are Tesla Model 3s. As for the Ionic Fife, uh, Fife, the Ionic Fife, the Scottish edition. As for the Ionic Five, I honestly can't fault that car. It is so good at everything. Fundamentally, it's a big, spacious family car, and it nails that brief very well. It's comfortable, the interior is delightful, it's well equipped. A lot of brands describe their car's interiors as loungy. This car's interior actually feels like a lounge. This car looks so good on the road. It's such a head turner. The interior is so charming. I especially love the moving center console and the little magnet board for putting, you know, photos in that. I love it. I want one. I think we should all buy them. Unfortunately, we can't because they're not especially cheap and there is quite a big waiting list. So if you're interested, order it now. Okay, before we do the high-end stuff, let me just quickly run you through some second-hand EV bargains that I've got my eye on at the moment. Now, do keep in mind, there still aren't an awful lot of really cheap second-hand electric cars to choose from. They've not been around for that long, not long enough to get really cheap, but they're coming. And in the meantime, there are a few that I think are well worth looking into before splashing your cash on a brand new car. Starting with the Nissan Leaf. Ah, the first ever mass-produced electric car, the pride and joy of our own Robert Llewellyn. Early Leafs are quite prone to battery degradation. A high mile Leaf from the early 2010s may have as little as 40, 50 miles max range at this point, but because of that, you can pick them up for really quite cheap 
And if you're looking for a car just to do your shopping in, little runabout, first car for your kids so they can't drive off too far, could be ideal. Alternatively, if you've got a bit more budget, you could even consider getting that battery replaced as Robert did with his in a recent video. BMW i3, I love this little car. It's a true maverick of the EV space. I think history will remember the i3 very fondly. But for now, the internet is absolutely teeming with them. And if you don't want to spend all that money on a Honda Re or a Mini Electric, but you still want to look cool zipping around town, this could be the answer. Next, we have the VW e-up slash Skoda Citygo e slash Seat Mi Electric, because it's all basically the same car. I love this little thing. They're just charming little econo boxes. They were great as petrol cars. They're even better as EVs. Surprisingly decent range, properly fun to drive, like a little go-kart. The range is surprisingly good on these too. When I had a Mi Electric on test, I was getting almost 200 miles of city driving out of it, more like 150 combined highway and city. And they are really charming little cars, properly fun to drive, go-kart handling, and surprisingly spacious inside. But my number one pick for the best used electric car out there right now is the VW e-Golf. Now, these are based on the Mark 7 Golf, which means they're not that old, which means they're not that cheap but I would genuinely consider one of these over a base ID3. Everywhere the ID3 falls short, the Mark 7 Golf flourishes. The cabin feels premium. The material quality is good. The user interface is simple and intuitive. These are not things you can say about the ID3 for all of its other strengths. Range is not great, probably somewhere in the low 100s, but how often do you drive more than that anyway? <sighs> Right, that's all the sensible chat out the way. Let's now finish up by running through my favorite really expensive electric cars, just in case any of us win a hundred grand on a scratchy on the way home. And let's begin with the Tesla Model Y. Not an awful lot to report on here. It is quite literally a Tesla Model 3 with a bigger bum. That means more rear cabin space and a bigger boot. And in fairness, rear cabin space is a weakness of the Model 3, so this is very useful. Whereas you would not really want to put adults in the back of a Model 3 for too long, they'd be happy as Larry in the back of a Model Y on a lengthy road trip. Allegedly, this car is coming to the UK very, very soon, and we will be reviewing it when it does. Then we have the BMW i4. Ooh, I love this thing. I actually have one of these on test at the moment, and I adore it. This is electric BMW number four, and arguably the most important one because it's the type of car BMW has always been best at, the sort of sporty executive saloon. And shock of shocks, it's absolutely brilliant. It's great to drive, beautifully made, easy to live with, and it goes like stink. Personally, I still struggle with that buck teeth face, but from every other angle, it's a really good looking car as well. My only reservation with the i4 is, does it sufficiently justify the price hike from something like a Polestar 2? Perhaps that's a twin test that we could do on the channel soon. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Next up, let's take a moment to discuss the Rivian R1T. Now, slightly putting my neck on the line here because, well, I've never driven this car or sat in it or even seen one in real life, but, the reviews coming out of America are overwhelmingly positive. Pickup trucks are part of the fabric of America, and there's a sea of electric ones on the way. Silverado, F-150, Hummer, Cybertruck. The Rivian is the first, and from what I'm hearing, it's a properly special thing. Incredibly capable off-road, thanks to that quad motor setup and high ground clearance and it features what is surely the coolest optional extra on any car ever a pull-out kitchen come on fingers crossed we will be covering this car on the channel this year anyway back to stuff i've actually driven let's talk about uber luxury suvs this is a very well represented corner of the EV market. Here we find the Jaguar I-Pace, the Audi e-tron, the Mercedes EQC, but all of them pale in comparison, both in terms of size and just general poshness, to my pick, the BMW iX. The face is hideous, the rest is exquisite. This car is just so good at everything. It is incredibly luxurious, unbelievably comfortable, alarmingly fast. There is surely no better way to get from your front door to your helipad, except maybe the Mercedes EQS. 
Another fabulously expensive electric wafter, here Merck takes all its learnings from decades of Mercedes S-Class and distills it into an ultra-luxurious electric limousine. Now, I do have to say that I personally found the much-talked-about hyperscreen a lot better to look at than it actually was to use. I also can't help but feel that the Merck's incredibly aerodynamic, if slightly blobby, exterior design is a bit lacking in road presence. But none of these things will trouble you from the back seat as you waft along with your head nestled by the softest cushion you ever did see. Personally, I think the iX does it better, but if we're talking ultra-luxury electric cars, there can be no question that these two are in a category of their own entirely. And finally, we have two high-performance sister cars and surely the two sexiest electric cars ever made, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT. When the Taycan showed up a couple of years ago, it immediately proved EVs were capable of a bunch of things previously thought to be impossible for an electric car, like feeling like a proper engaging driver's car, being genuinely rewarding to drive. In other words, feeling like a Porsche. I still lie awake at night sometimes thinking about how crisp the steering is in the Taycan, especially with the rear wheel steer spec. Oh, it's just, mm. But you know what? I potentially love the e-tron GT even more. It sacrifices some of the Porsche's sporty focus in favor of a softer, more GT approach, and it just suits the platform so well. It's also a lot rarer than the Porsche, at least based on how many of each I've seen on the road, and is surely the best looking car of last year. Oh, okay, there we go, we made it. Those were my 30 favorite electric cars that are currently on sale or going on sale in the very, very near future. I hope if you are someone that's considering going electric this year, that this video was a useful starting point. And please let me know down in the comments, what do you make of my list? What was the glaring omission? Which car clearly should have been there that wasn't? Which car was there that shouldn't been? Let's get down in the comments and have a good old fashioned debate. Right, I'm going to go and have a lie down now because uh, my head's hot. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Ombra, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney. The world's number one festival of clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we can't wait to see you there. Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, cost you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.